Wiener Prater, or sometimes known as just Prater, is the second oldest amusement park in the world. It's located in the heart of Vienna, Austria, and in 1766 was designated as a free place for people to enjoy, spend some time at, and they slowly started adding attractions for people, including the world's oldest Ferris wheel, which is one of the biggest icons of Vienna. It's a very popular place for locals and tourists to visit. According to Prater's website, they're home to over 250 attractions. Now, not all those are rides, but there certainly is a lot to do here. In fact, I'd say it's very easy to get turned around walking around this place because of how much there is here. You know, I've had the opportunity to visit a lot of different theme parks across Europe, and Prater feels very different from almost all of them. I like to think of this more as a permanent fairground than a traditional theme park. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, the entry experience. There is like a main entryway to Wiener Prater, but there's so many different places that you can enter the property from. And you just walk in. Everything is open air. And there's not even a fence around it. The park will just end, and it transitions into like a literal state park. Number two, they're hours. Not only is Prater open for like most of the year, but they typically don't close until midnight or 1 a.m., which is crazy. Most theme parks in Europe close at like five or six. Even in the U.S., you don't really see places open that late, except for maybe during like Halloween time. So that very much lends this place to being a nighttime destination. And it'll really feel that way because of all the lights and colors, the sounds. This place is popping. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there'll be long lines because you pay for each individual attraction, which has its pros and cons. The pro is if you're just hanging out with friends and you don't want to spend any money, you don't have to. You can just enjoy the atmosphere and that's totally fine. Or if you want to do one or two attractions, it ends up being a lot more affordable than buying one day ticket. The downside is if you want to do everything, Prater gets expensive. Most attractions range between three and a half euros and nine and a half euros. I think that was the most expensive one I saw, which was Olympia looping, which makes sense. But I think their Vacoma boomerang was in second place at about like seven. And like, let's say you want to ride something multiple times. Oof, yeah, not ideal. And there's also no season pass offering. So unfortunately, if this is like your home park, you can't really go and just like marathon your favorite rides. The way it works is you walk up to each attraction. After you pay, they give you either a receipt with a barcode on it or a little disc that that you insert into the turnstiles to walk on through. And then the last reason why this is more so a permanent fare than like a traditional amusement park, many of the attractions feel temporary. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty that are very permanent, but when you look at the setup, the platforms, the booths, you can tell that they're here for a short period of time, and then when I assume their contract is up, they pack up and move on to the next location. Everything here is independently operated, which means they're paying money to be on that little section of land, and they're all competing against the other attractions for your money. Unfortunately, that means there is absolutely no cohesion at all whatsoever in Wiener Prater. Everything is seemingly random. We also get many attractions that are very similar to each other. We saw multiple sets of bumper cars, multiple wild mice coasters, multiple old school dark rides or fun houses. The list goes on and on. Even food and drink stands and vending machines have varied pricing. We saw some sodas that would cost you three and a half euros, but then if you go somewhere else in the park, you might find a vending machine that had them for one euro. It's crazy. I can honestly say I've never been to another park that is like that. And to be honest, I don't think I really liked it. Yes, it had a very unique vibe, but I think I just cared too much about that overall experience, you know, cohesion. And so walking around the Prater, I'm just like, what the heck is this? It's just very, very different. It was also funny to me, the different tactics that some of these attractions use to get you to want to ride their ride. Like there's so many different indoor attractions, but obviously you can't see what is actually inside. So it's all about the facade. They have a cool entrance and then they have one section that's up on like an upper level where the ride vehicle will just briefly come outside. So then you as a guest, as you're walking by, you see riders in this car going around and you're like, Huh, I wonder what's inside. I think I'll spend my money here and then it's like a wacky shack. Some of them are definitely better than others. But it's just funny because like every single indoor ride here does that exact same thing. It's all about making it look as enticing as possible. Unfortunately, that also means that when you actually get to like that indoor section, sometimes it's not that good. Like there's an indoor coaster here called Masquerade. Looks really cool on the outside, but it was pretty dumb. Don't really recommend it. But you see this dark ride called like Hotel Psycho. Yeah, that was like pretty fun. I would recommend that one. So it really is a mix. You're going to get variety between like kind of crappy ride experiences, really cool ride experiences, but maybe it's like a one and done or some that are just all right. I wouldn't really say any of the rides here really like blew me away. 
Nothing here outside of Olympia looping I was really like, huh, you know, I really want to re-ride that. Everything's kind of a one and done. And that goes for the different roller coasters here as well, because as of right now, we have 14 operating roller coasters, but obviously that's changing all the time. We even have a new attraction that's currently under construction. It's actually going to be a Mock Rides Big Dipper. I'm super excited for this. This is going to be an awesome addition to this park. I feel like it's going to end up being their new standout ride because Olympia looping is very infrequent. You know, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Prepare to spend well over 100 euros if you want to get all of your roller coaster credits. But if you don't really care about that, I mean, there's definitely some that you don't really need to do just because there's not really a whole lot to it. Some that stood out to me, Mega Blitz is a custom Vacoma coaster. That was actually really fun. Pulled some really good forces. It's located in the back of the park. I recommend that one. Jacinta Sao is a Gerstlauer bobsled. That one was pretty cool and it's like right in the middle of the park and it looks pretty big compared to everything else. So yeah, I liked that one. They have a Zamperla Valare called Valare, which is terrible, horrible attraction. Do not recommend that one. They have an indoor coaster called Indoor Coaster. That was a Mauer Spinner. I say do it, but really only for the queue and the effects. That was kind of fun. There's also an old school Brakeman operated wind roller coaster here. It's been operating since 1950, which you definitely got to do. It's very, very tame. Top speed is only 34 miles per hour. Doesn't really have any like big drops. Like you could take your kids on this thing if you wanted. But yeah, there's only a handful of Brakeman coasters left in the world. So definitely make sure to do this one. And it's tucked away. It's kind of hard to find. We were honestly walking around for a bit trying to see where this thing was. It's like right on the edge of the park. And because it's not very tall, it's easy to miss. And that goes for actually a lot of attractions here. You really have to go through all these different nooks and crannies to make sure you didn't miss anything. Prada really is a true blend between new and old. You get a lot of those classics, but you also get new stuff always coming in to keep things fresh. And you know, I'd say one of the things that really stands out from Prada is actually not the roller coasters at all, it's the flat rides. So a little fun fact for you, Funtime owns some of the land at Prada, so they use it as a showcase for their rides. Kind of like how the Mock family does that with Europa Park. That's why you get so many cool Funtime attractions here. We did a one-of-a-kind ride here called Tornado. The ride experience was like, whatever. But it was a one-of-a-kind, so like, yeah, it was right on the main pathway. A lot of people were like, whoa, look at that thing. They also have like a huge star flyer. Some crazy thrill rides that I can't really say I've seen anywhere else. Next to Tornado, we also saw a river rafting ride that had an elevator lift hill. That looked pretty cool. One ride I can't recommend enough is their Tagata. This ended up being our favorite ride of the entire park. If you've never done one of these, it's probably because you live in the United States where they are banned. If you want to ride one, you pretty much got to go to a place where they permanently operate, like at Prater, or track one down at like a local carnival or fair that's going across Europe or South America, you know? But it's pretty straightforward. You all sit in a circle, it starts spinning you around, bouncing up and down, and there's no restraint. So you can like stand up and you fall over and it's like definitely dangerous. But it was hilarious. It was the hardest I'd laughed in a long time. Definitely go at night if you want to rowdy your crowd. And don't bring your kids on it. Wait till they're older. Outside of the rides, you know, you'll also find a lot of different restaurants here. This ranges from quick service to full-fledged, like, dining experiences. So many different places to eat. It honestly reminded me of, like, a beefed-up version of Bakken, which is actually the world's oldest amusement park. That one's located in Denmark, outside of Copenhagen. And I know I said this there, and I'll say it again here. I imagine there's a lot of people who just come to Prada for dinner. They get a nice meal, and then they take in the nighttime vibe. And that's pretty cool. I love that something like that exists here. And that's so easily accessible. You know, Prater has its own individual train stop. You take the U1 or U2 from inside Vienna and drops you off pretty much right outside the front entrance. I'd highly recommend doing that, especially over like driving. So that way you don't have to deal with parking or anything. But there's so much to do here. Honestly, this review could go on for so much longer if I talked about each individual attraction. And that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, whenever I go back to Prater, I could probably do a completely different set of attractions with no overlap and still have plenty left over. And I think there's something to be said about that. Just be prepared to spend some money. One or two rides, yeah, may not be that expensive, but if you want to do a lot, it really does add up. So in conclusion, I'm really glad I got the opportunity to visit here. I can't say it's a place I'm like dying to get back to. Like I mentioned earlier, like none of the attractions really like wowed me. You know, certainly some really cool attractions, but not necessarily anything that would make me want to like fly back to Vienna just to do it. Like I would some rides at other amusement parks in Europe. But really is an interesting, different experience. And even though I personally wouldn't rank it super high on like top places I've ever visited, I can certainly appreciate the history here and what it means for the people of Austria because I know they take a lot of pride in this place. So let me know down in the comments below if you've been to Wiener Prater in Vienna, Austria. Post any thoughts you may have of it down in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out other park reviews we have. They're all available in a playlist in alphabetical order by the park's name. So go give some of those a watch and stay tuned for more here at Coaster Studios and I'll see you next time.